Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Thomas S. Moore line of finished bourbons coming out of the Barton 1792 distillery. Now this, these are going to be kind of the yearly limited edition type release that Barton is going to do moving forward. This first three that were released are extended finishes, meaning they were left in those finishing casts for much longer than what is typical. Um, we have a Chardonnay finished uh, bourbon, we have a Cabernet Sauvignon finished bourbon, and a Port finished bourbon. Now, the Chardonnay was almost four years in those casks. Uh, the Cab was, I think, two and a half years in the cask, and the Port was almost four years in the cask as well. Now, they all start with Barton's High Rye uh, Mash Bill Bourbon, which, again, nobody knows exactly how much uh, what the mash bill is, but reported to be around 25, 26 ish amount of rye in that mash bill. Uh, of course, they have done the high rye release before, so you, you can be familiar with what that tastes like. Um, they took about five to seven year old high rye bourbon and then put them in the finishing cask. Again, four years additional, two and a half, four. Okay. Um, now we're going to go ahead and get to the nosing and tasting because I got a feeling this is going to be a long video so I don't want that to be the case. So we're going to go ahead and get started right away with the Chardonnay uh, bottled at 97.9 proof. Wow, nice and sweet. Caramel driven here. Vanilla beans. Little hint of nuttiness on the, on the nose. Cherries, red apples. A little hint of plum, cinnamon, baking spices. Good. There's a little bit of a, there is a little bit of a sharpness, a stringency going on to it, on the nose at least. But lots of um, cherries, maybe a little hint of right there on the edge of the glass. Little hint of raspberry. Lots of dark chocolate. Leather and oak. Okay, kind of uh, tickled the nose there. All right, moving on to the Cabernet. A little a little darker on this on this not as sweet so we're getting a little more brown sugar than caramel here still with the cherries plums a little bit of dates in this one maybe even a little hint of pomegranate good amount of baking spices cinnamons on top of those cocoa powder a little bit of like almost like a walnut characteristic to this one. And there is almost a you can you can on the edge of the glass, if I don't inhale really big, but inhale very softly, you can actually pick up the actual cab, the wine tone to this one. I gotta do that really softly, otherwise you start pulling the fruits. Okay, now we're gonna go to the port. Okay, probably the sweetest aromatically of the three here. Definitely the darkest, not only on, on the, the sweetener, but also on the fruits. Because here we're, we're pulled away from cherries. We're almost heading towards like really caramelized, really brown sugar, caramelized uh, mixed berries. Probably cherries, raspberries, maybe even a little blueberry. But lots of like figs, dates, raisins in here as well. A little twinge of the um, guns powder, a little gun smoke in it as well. That's going to be definitely coming from that. The phenols coming out of that sherry cask. Sometimes they can be as big as you know sulfur, where it's just you know there's been there's some bad ones, but this is not that. But there you definitely pick up a gun smoke to it baking spices are still there the nuttiness is still there 
I think the nuttiness is going to be the driving characteristic along with this kind of sweet caramel, but these just get a little more brown sugar to them. Really nice. Okay. So now let's go ahead and get to the taste. Starting with the Chardonnay. 97.9 proof. Medium, just above medium viscosity. Really, there's a big, there's one, there's one thing that could possibly be a drawback on this one. It's the oxidative note. It's almost like a hydrogen peroxide to it. Some people, I'm not as, um, that doesn't come across really harsh to me, Some, you know, um, but I know I have friends that are really sensitive to, to peroxide, and so they, if they get any kind of essence like that in the bourbon or in the whiskey, they pick it up right away. And they're going to pick it up in this one, for sure. It can be a natural. It's not something that they necessarily add. It can be a natural element coming from the wood. It's a chemical reaction that happens in there. That can sometimes, I guess, be residual. And maybe it's a little more common in wine casks. Because I don't usually see it a lot. All right, very sweet, caramel, vanilla, big nuttiness. It shows up even early before we even get to the mid palate. Those uh, roasted nuts kind of rush in. It's mixed, little peanut almonds, a um, little walnut. And then you start picking up the, the cocoa as you start hitting that the swell of the cinnamon, the baking spices on the mid palate. Then you start getting just driven down with the cocoa, those roasted nuts even feeling a little bolder on the back end. Leather, oak, tannins drying out slightly on the sides. The fruit uh, component on it, pretty straightforward. I would say it's kind of like a little bit of a sour cherry because there's a little twinge of sour fruit to this one. Uh, sour cherry, a little raspberry, a little plums, uh, plumminess to it. It is, it's right, right as I was sitting there searching for it, I felt the wine hit. It's that Chardonnay that's giving it the sourness, actually. And then you pick up the intensity of the, the swelling bourbon spice. And really nice, I actually like this one on the finish. Uh, I like the vanilla bean and it's kind of the mixed fruit characteristic up front. The little sourness of the wine, I could do without. Um, I like the way that picks up on the spice on the mid palate. And then I like the finish. I wish the tannins weren't as bold as they were in this one. It's a good experiment to see what happens because that was the whole thing that Barton was trying to do. They were trying to do this extended maturation where, you know, let's see what happens when, you know, you take a uh, bourbon and you leave it in a finishing cast much longer than typical. Because again, typically, you know, maybe in a wine cast you're going to do three months, six months probably max for a wine cask and fortified wines you could go again a year maybe two uh, but they went four and four so it's a na nice experiment I don't think it's probably there's probably a reason why most people don't do that and I think it shows up here as the the little drying uh, tannic back end that these have That said, really nice sweet oak component as well in there. And I do like that. That's the, the bourbon probably by itself. All right, here we go. Uh, on to the Cabernet. Let me get a double rinse on this one. All right, here we go. Big fruit, big nuttiness. Caramel brown sugar, a little more brown sugar here, just like it nosed on the palate. Red cherries, 
little raspberry. There's almost a little element of almost like a little date pomegranate to this one. A little hint of an orange oil. Good amount of cinnamon baking spices. On the back end, a little cocoa, not nearly as heavy as the dark chocolate or the roasted nuts that this one was giving me. But on this one, you get a little cocoa and not a, like a mixed nut, almost like a little roasted walnut on the back end to go in with the um, kind of drying oak. Feels kind of sweet, but there's enough cocoa and leather to make it feel a little dry, the back end. Again, I think the, the little peroxide note is still carrying into this one as well. Sometimes something like that will help a whiskey. You know, it's kind of oxidative. It kind of helps it feel a little better in the mouth, but sometimes it can just stand out and you really wish it wasn't there. It's, it's kind of how I feel about this one. All right, on to the port. After the double rinse, here we go. As I took it in, I'm kind of rolling it over. I got hit with the um, that gunpowder, and it's it's it was verging on being a little more than that, like. It kind of hit a little bolder than I thought it was going to be as far as that little hint of sulfur tone. It hit, but then you kind of get covered up with the fruits and then it kind of wisps it through again. But let's run it. Okay, here we go. Medium, just above medium viscosity. Feels good. Um, good balance of, of the, the dark fruits, the figs, dates, raisins, plums, with a little bit of a, again, sour cherry, little raspberry, little pomegranate in this one. Probably has the most complexity as far as the fruit component here, but the sulfur, that little gunpowder thing, not great, okay, not great there. Uh, but if you're not uh, really sensitive to sulfur, you're probably going to be fine with it because you can almost talk yourself into, again, gun smoke. It kind of wisps in, maybe you know, shows up a little bit here and there, but it's not dominant. But if you're sensitive to sulfur, you're really not going to like this one because it is in there. Um, mm -hmm. Right up front. Right up front. Then it goes away and you get the red apples. You get all that kind of everything that we're getting here as far as the fruits. And then you get those dates, figs, a raisin aspect to it. Again, pomegranate was in these two, a little more in this one. Baking spices, uh, almost, this one almost gives you roasted coffee bean in with those roasted nutty, uh, roasted nuts that are going on on the finish. Again, leather, orange oils. These two had a little orange oil. This one I didn't pick that up as much, but it was more vanilla driven along with the caramel. Oak and leather is still there. The finishes are fairly similar throughout. Oak, leather, uh, nuttiness, sweet oak, um, little dry tannins on there. Not too much though, so uh, fortunate about that. Again, the only drawback to them is going to be that the amount of tannins on the back, that little drying aspect, and then again, kind of that oxidative peroxide note that I kind of feel is in each of these. Um, but overall, pretty satisfied with the experiment that they did. Uh, it goes to show that, you know, long maturations and finishing casks aren't necessarily a bad thing. I think there are some negatives that pull and there's probably a reason, again, we don't do that. Uh, but it was fun to see. So if you see these on the shelves, retail pricing, by the way, $70, okay, across the board, about $70. Now I have seen them going uh, in some stores, you know, they're marking up to almost secondary pricing, which is about $125 for these. To be honest, um, seventy dollars is where these should stand, uh, because again, they have a little flaws to them, in my opinion. Now, again, everybody's palate's different. You may really not be sensitive to some of these things. 
and I hope that's the case, uh, but that's just my opinion again. Uh, but I thank each and every one of you for being here. Uh, keep leaving all those great comments. That's greatly appreciated. Everyone have a great day, and cheers.